Hello everybody and welcome to the Human Echoes Rundown for... <gasps> Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Men Tell No Tales. The longest titled Pirates of the Caribbean movie. And the most recent one. Uh, I will tell you where I'm coming at from this series. I liked... I loved the first film. And I liked the second two. I know that there are folks that really deride those films as being just when the move the, the series went to garbage. But I like the first trilogy. I hate four. So I was going into this hoping that we were at least going to get a return to the quality of movies two and three. And Movie one, if possible, that would have been good. If we got could have got back to movie one, we really would have been doing good. Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales, in my opinion, is not as bad as Pirates 4, whatever they were calling that one. Uh, but it doesn't work as well as any of the first three movies. And I think the problem is that they've gimmicked themselves into a corner. What really worked about the first Pirates movie is that you had this very grounded, gritty kind of naval battle world into which you injected this fantastical elements of ghosts and curses and things like that that crescendoed through the film. Whereas at the beginning, it's just regular sailing ships and regular piracy and you move forward into oh there's ghosts oh they can't be killed oh they turn into weird skeleton things in the in the moonlight and the weirdness escalates but once you're making a sequel to those films you have to kind of start off at that base level of weirdness and they did a pretty good job in the second two because they managed to change it up a little bit okay so we had ghosts in the first one all right, that's cool. Well, in the second one, we're going to continue building the world, right? We're going to have these weird zombie, like, sea pirate guys that are part fish. I mean, that... I, I love the world building in Pirates 2 and 3. I really, truly do. The story, I will agree, gets convoluted, but the strength of those movies is that it takes this mythology that we established in the first one and moved it forward in what I felt was a compelling way. But in this film, Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales, and yes, someone does say that line in the movie, in this film, they've gone back to ghosts. And we've seen ghosts. These ghosts look a little different than the ones we had in the first film. They walk on top of the water instead of under the water. But beyond that, there's not really much new here to see. We're not getting much more mythology explored. They have this new MacGuffin, the Trident of Poseidon, which looks kind of cool. And that's all I can say about it. I, I don't know where it comes from. They say it was forged by Poseidon. The lady who doesn't believe in magic or weird stuff says it was forged by Poseidon, so I guess I gotta believe her. Speaking of which... Characters in this movie are the other major flaw because the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, when their stories are done right, are following people with very clear motivations. All right, people who have a goal and they're making alliances and making deals and doing what they can to get to the goal that they have. Pirates 5 has some very interesting motivations for its characters. Our, our main guy, whose name I've forgotten because he's kind of a bland character, but he's Will Turner's son, all right? He's trying to bring his dad back from the curse of being the Dutchman. And he, he at the beginning of the movie, you see him as a boy, like go to his dad's ship underwater. It's pretty pretty baller, honestly. He drops a rock off the, the boat and, like, lands himself on this ship that's sailing beneath the waves. And his dad's like, uh, what are you doing? 
You can't be here. Go home. And he has his whole thing. I can save you, Dad. So he has motivation. And the girl, whose name I've also forgotten, last name Smith, first name starts with a K, she is trying to also do something, not for her father, but live out her father's legacy or what she believes her father's legacy to be. She has this book which has these constellations drawn in it and she knows that it's something that her father had left with her at before he left her at this orphanage and she is trying to fulfill this prophecy or whatever. It, the point being, she feels like it's it's tied into her identity and her her backstory. She, she thinks that her father would have wanted her to do this. And so you have... Not only, again, motivation for the character, but a thematic through line established because it's about this idea of legacy and, and what is passed down to you from your parents. The problem is the movie doesn't keep it up. It starts out establishing these things pretty well. And then Jack Sparrow shows up. And Jack Sparrow is a great flavor. All right. He's like salt. All right. You, you need salt in almost any food. Almost every movie would be better with Jack Sparrow in it. But you don't need all the salt. You don't need a cup of salt in your pancake recipe. A couple of tablespoons will probably do just fine. And we get a lot of Jack Sparrow flavored salt in this movie. We get too much Jack Sparrow flavored salt in this movie. And it's not just specifically Jack Sparrow. But it's what Jack Sparrow represents. Jack Sparrow is the force of chaos. All right, He's essentially a trickster god. He never has a plan. He never has... He'll have a clear motivation. But he's sort of making it up as he goes along a lot of the time. And just stumbling his way into weird, fun stuff that sort of just works out for him. Which again, is a good flavor to have in your movie. But it needs to be contrasted with more clarity. When the chaos starts, starts to take over the plot, that's when the movie starts to go bad. And this movie got so chaotic and lost track of helping the audience keep track of where the characters are and why they're doing what they're doing through a lot of it that it just turned into noise. There's a lot of cool action here. There's a lot of cool moments. If you pull them out, I mean, you can make a hundred great trailers of this movie. But it, it falls apart, and it really falls apart in the third act. Not to be, get super specific, but there are concepts that are just introduced and then used immediately. The kind of thing that you need to set up earlier in the story to pay it off is not set up it's just like well now we have this also magic MacGuffin. let's just pretend it's not a magic gun let's just pretend jack sparrow walking along through five movies he hasn't had a magic gun but he pulls out a magic gun he's like by the way magic gun boom and shoot somebody H hypothetical here but if that had happened you can kind of get the idea of sort of the, what the flavor of several things that go on towards the end of this movie. It just, it, it makes rules up right at the end so it can finish the story. And that's sloppy, guys. It's super sloppy storytelling. So, for those reasons, Pirates of the Caribbean is kind of a failure. However, you might be asking yourself, Albert, we know. The metric of story and character. Yes, you've given it a failing grade. But what about the most important measure of all? What about the zombie ghost shark meter Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you, if you're going to see Pirates of the Caribbean 5, Dead Men, Don't Tell Any Tales at All, for the zombie ghost sharks, you will be happy. Now, they're not in a lot of the film. I want to be clear. There's very limited zombie ghost shark action. It's basically just one scene, but it's an extended scene. And the zombie ghost sharks get a lot of play. And they're awesome. 
there was a moment that was set up earlier in the film with a stupid joke that didn't get paid off that I was very disappointed by. But, despite that, if you want to see some zombie ghost sharks in the film, you ain't going to see any better zombie ghost sharks in any film this year, or I dare to say, this decade. Pirates of the Caribbean 5, The Zombie Ghost Shark Story, gets a thumbs up from Albert Berg. So until next time, for the Human Echoes Rundown, I'm Albert, reminding Hollywood that everything is always better with zombie ghost sharks. Take care, everybody.